Have you ever wondered what the temperatures were the year Jesus was born or when Leonardo da Vinci started painting the Mona Lisa? Well, there's a chart for that now. Yeah. The new visualiz visualization that looks back 2,000 plus years gives an estimate year by year of what the average global climate was. It was created by climate scientist Ed Hawkins. So earlier this morning, I spoke with CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli, and he explained what exactly the, sh the chart shows. All right, so what you're looking at is uh, over 2,000 stripes, and each stripe indicates a year. And the blue stripes indicate temperatures below the 20th century average, and the red stripes indicate temperatures above the 20th century average. If you look at that closely enough, look at that spike and sea of red at the very end of right. it. It goes to show you just how abnormal, how abnormal uh, recent warming is over the past few decades here. This is around the world, by the way. This is a global uh, temperature map. Now, you can also see right there in the medieval times, around 900 or 1,000, that's something called the, the medieval warm period. It used to appear warmer on, on, on on visualizations like this mm -hmm. because it wasn't so hot right now, but because it's so hot right now, it shifted the whole scale. So now the medieval warm period actually appears modest mm -hmm. uh, when you compare it to modern warming. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I to make of what looks like a sort of colder period, mm -hmm. like right before we start to heat up? That's called the Little Ice Age. Oh, so ah. the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age were real. They really did happen, but they didn't happen globally around the whole world. They happened in certain parts of the world, especially around the Europe area. So because of that, they don't factor in quite as, as largely on a global scale. But yes, there was something called the Little Ice Age. It wasn't an ice age at all. It was just a slight cooling around parts, not all parts, but, okay. but various parts of the world. So you can't get around sort of the impact of that visual, like yeah. seeing the red on mm -hmm. the end there, you know, our times. Um, but I know what people are gonna say, because there are a lot of naysayers out there. Sure. And they're gonna go, you, how did you figure out what the temperature was yeah. 2,000 years ago? Right. How do you do that? So what we use are proxies. So they go back, they take sediment records, they take ice core records, pollen records, coral records, and they're able to determine by, let's say, the amount of growth in, in a tree ring or the amount of growth in a coral or, you know, certain aspects of, of one part of an ice core, uh, you know, an ice core exactly how warm or cold it was during that time. And they're able to reconstruct this. Now, what Ed did is he used a uh, collaboration called Pages 2K, Past Global Temperatures 2K. It's a collaboration of, of many scientists who've come together with all the proxy records in the world and said, okay, what is uh, our best bet on, on how, uh, you know, how the Earth warmed and cooled over the past 2,000 years? And that is what they came up with, this data set, which then Ed made into a visualization. Mm. Yeah. So since then, apparently, I've been told, this image has sort of gone viral. And yeah. it's popping up in all kinds of places. Can you right. can you talk to us about that? Well, it's such a simple image, right? It just kind of easily shows people who are looking at it how warm it has been recently yeah. and relatively speaking how warm it was to, to past times. Oh, yeah. And so people are using it in various different places. This is Germany. Uh, that is someone's Tesla. Someone actually wrapped their Tesla in the warming stripes. Wow. I know, I see, I see your face. <laughs> That's Berlin, an art installation in Berlin. It's cool, right? It's not only really visual and simple and it tells a simple story, but it's also really nice because it's got all the, the nice colors. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, that's a bank advertisement in, I believe, Australia. That's the cover of The Economist not too long ago to kind of highlight just how much that we have warmed. That's a rock band with tens of thousands of people using it as their backdrop. Um, again, that's that's Germany. You know what it sort of reminds me of? Like a little bit of a riff on the barcodes that we see on all our items everywhere. Like you're sort yeah. of familiar with right. that image, yeah. but then it takes on exactly. a completely different meaning with the colors. Yeah. Um, but like I mentioned, there are naysayers out yeah. there about climate change, and yeah. someone has put together an alternative mm -hmm. image. Can you talk to us about that, and hopefully we can show people it? Yeah, so it's becoming a problem already. In fact, CBS News posted the written story. I wrote a story for CBSNews.com. Yeah. Please take a look at it. You'll understand this whole thing much better once you do. This is the alternative image. This is the alternative image and what they have done is they've excluded the last 15 years of, of, of temperatures um, and by doing that it shifts the whole scale. It makes the medieval warm period seem even warmer. In addition, if you really look closely at the edges of this image, I'm not even sure they used data. I know where the data set came from if in fact they used data for this, but if you zoom in on the very, look at the very, very top, you can kind of see 
that it, it looks as though it's a little discombobulated. So it's very possible this is just simply photoshopped. Wow. We can't be 100% sure, oh, but you, yeah. you look as look we zoom that. in. So I don't know if it's photoshopped or not. What I do know is if they really did use data, it only went through the year 2007. And by the way, before 2007, or actually before 1850, it was based on a, a proxy record that included mostly just northern hemisphere, not mm -hmm. southern hemisphere temperatures. And it's also based on a record that, that stitches together a proxy record with a thermometer temperature record. So proxy record through 1850, thermometer temperature record after that. It's lots of kind of misleading things. Completely. You can see it on that graphic right there. So there, what um, they're trying to suggest with that is that, yeah, there's climate right. change, but it's, but happened it's part many of a times. natural right. cycle. And it was stronger back in the medieval warm period. Right. And, and as soon as CBS News posted this, this story, what you saw is um, people posting the wrong image and saying, ha ha, you guys are wrong, look at this Whoa. image. So it does have an effect and people that are especially climate contrarians are using it and I've seen it various times on, uh, on, on Twitter and on social media and on different web pages. And it's a problem because, it, and that's the, that's the goal, right? The goal is to, is to disinform and mislead, especially people who don't Completely. want climate action. By the way, this is a drop in a bucket. There are billions of dollars, billions and billions of dollars spent on disinformation from various sources on climate change all the time. I know that that is a worthwhile discussion and hopefully yeah. we're going to continue to have you I'm on. I'm doing a story on that. Because right there are many angles yeah. to this disinformation mm -hmm. thing. Um, but keeping uh -huh. that in mind, mm -hmm. you know, how do you make sure that you're getting accurate information? Something pops up on your news feed or your Twitter feed. It looks legit. It comes from yeah. a group that seems like they're all about, right. you know, climate change. How do you know? You got to go to the source. So you have to go to the scientists who really study this for a living. And, and the most authoritative source is the IPCC, which is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Mm -hmm. They produce reports, you know, oftentimes every few years, but sometimes a lot more than that. So you really have to go and ask a, ask a real scientist uh, what the situation is. Right. It, it's hard. Sometimes you get misled. It took me days to pick apart exactly how they went about doing this. Mm -hmm. And I'm a scientist. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine it must be really difficult for the average everyday person yeah. who doesn't do this for a living. Um, it's really fascinating stuff. I know we're going to have you back on to continue this Absolutely. conversation. Sounds good. Jeff Berardelli, thank you so You're much. Welcome.